Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, so today we're going to have a kickoff session uh, to get our beloved CS team members to actually get an opportunity to learn the new technology. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see, the other team is uh, very stressful. Basically, I just say you, you this book, you just take yourself and you read yourself, and I just want this in two weeks. Oh, stressful, right? But uh, with this team, I'm going to take it a little bit slow, okay? I'm going to take it easy one step at a time. Uh, so for the kickoff meeting, uh, first of all, I think I will give you some introduction. This one I can drop off. So I will give you some introduction. So my introduction, it can be in the form of uh, technology. I can go straight into Java, I can go to Angular, I can do, do all this, but I try to avoid going straight deep into something. But I want to give you some big picture so that you can understand what we are trying to build. Now, a lot of this part of these sessions is specially for you, and we will do it frequently once, uh, at least twice a week. I really just need to book my time, then I will come in. Then each session, we, we try to keep it within one hour, okay? So for today, it will be introduction. So for this introduction, I will give you high level picture overview so that you know the big picture. Because later on, uh, if I want, let's say if I, you want to study every part of oh, I tell you, it, it will take, it's not possible for every one of you to be studying everything. So what we will do is after this, uh, after you get the big picture, then we will split the team into different different parts. That means that uh, maybe you focus on Java more, maybe you focus on Angular more, maybe you focus on Lambda more, maybe you focus on uh, uh, um, Elastic Beanstalk more, you focus on the RDS more, you focus on uh, maybe the RESTful API more, you focus on uh, different, different things. Okay? So when do you want me to start? Uh, sharing with you in, in the introduction. Uh, I, I would like this session to be question based. That means that uh, you ask a question, I will. You ask a question, ma. One one question, I have to talk like ten minutes, explain. You know, so don't be stingy. Mm. Just ask questions. We can go through with the architecture. Architecture first. Mm. Okay. <coughs> so uh, the architecture is that uh, <laughs> if you look at the uh, big ledger. Uh, essentially, we have uh, uh, we we do it in an account uh, uh, AWS uh, account the AWS account. Mm -hmm. So inside this AWS account, uh, we have uh, application load balancer. Uh, does anybody know what is the application load balancer? You know? Who don't know what is the application load balancer? Okay, thank you very much for raising your hand. Application load balancer is like you give it an IP address. Of course, you can give it a domain name. Let's say in our case, we call it the API dot account dot com. Of course, there are some IP address that we can tie to the application load balancer. Now, uh, the application load balancer is like the front end whereby um, in Elastic, in AWS, the classic load balancer, application load balancer, and network load balancer. And if we don't want to use this application load balancer, it is also possible to, to use technology like API Gateway. Okay? Uh, it's also possible for, for us to use API Gateway. Regardless of whether, of whether we use the application load balancer or the API Gateway, of course, behind here we need to have either servers or we can have uh, Lambda, AWS Lambda, serverless application Lambda. Okay? Now, these servers can be a variety of things. For example, it can be Elastic Beanstalk. It can also be uh, uh, the Docker, the container. Huh? 
the okay. container, elastic container, so ECS, ECS, elastic container service. Or it can be you run your own Docker farm or something like that, Dockers uh, or whatever Dockers that you want, or you use the Docker provided by uh, Amazon also can. Um, it can be uh, your own EC2. Your own EC2 instance is also possible. So the application load balancer is like a place where you hit, then the application load balancer has got some features and functions. Let's take a look at what are the features and functions of the application load balancer. Okay, AWS uh, application load balancer. Okay, so if you look at the application load balancing, uh, there are three types. As I said just now, there's classic load balancer, network load balancer, and application load balancer. I'll, I will not go into too detail, but uh, at the uh, high level, I can just explain to you that this is the old original load balancer that Amazon has, okay? This is the new one, okay? New one, wow, a lot of features functions on the application load balancer. This network load balancer is low level. Let's say you want to have a load balancer here, an endpoint here, but you want to control at TCP IP level packets or something like that to filter through and then uh, forwarding all the network stuff that you're doing, then you use the network load balancer. Uh, okay, so, so, in our case, <coughs> we are of course not using everything, but what we do is that what we do is that this API dot account dot com when somebody try to call the API, the application load balancer will forward it to the elastic beanstalk. Okay, the elastic pin stock. So what is the elastic pin stock, so Haida? How about Ticket? Zoom? Single stock? Uh, what is elastic pin stock? Usually used for developer who don't know the architecture of the, the AWS. Just focus on the application, then you just specify all the configuration, just pump in. Okay, uh, partially correct, but not complete the answer. Okay, now I give you an example. Let's say, for example, you we want to launch uh, currently a Docker. Uh. So uh, we use a Linux. We choose a Linux image for the Docker. Then after that, we choose a Linux image. We have to write the Docker script. Uh, install this program. Install that program. Install them. Only we can save it as an image. Then only we can load uh, launch it. When you are using a Docker, you are actually you need to manage the operating system, Linux operating system, because you need to specify a great user, set this permission, set that permission, agree, right? So when you are using Elastic Beanstalk, Amazon tell you that a hey, operating system you don't worry, you just write your Java program or your PHP program or your some program, then you launch your program into a container so in this container it will take care of all the operating system stuff you don't need to worry about antivirus you don't need to worry about everything you just worry about your java or your php or your javascript program node.js or something like that understand now then you may ask me a, another question hey vincent if we can do this then why do we still need to use lambda what is the difference between Elastic Beanstalk and the Lambda? Can somebody tell me? Lambda also, you just write the program, you just launch it. What's the difference? Uh, Ifa? Not sure. Rosmina? Don't know? Yes? No? <coughs> Don't know. What do you think? Mm, maybe like the Lambda is like for calling, calling some services. I also can call the Elastic Beanstalk services. What's the difference? Upper bezel here. Upper bezel. Upper bezel. Okay, you know. No, no, not sure. Okay. When you use a lambda, you call the function, it will run what you want it to run, then you will go to sleep. 
But elastic beanstalk, uh, even if you are not calling, uh, you power up the instance, uh, it will remain there. It will not shut down. Uh. Even if there's nobody calling, uh, the, the instance is still running, it's still costing you money in terms of the EC2. The elastic beanstalk, the pricing charging mechanism is like the EC2 charges. But the lambda, uh, it is per execution call. Every time you call, it's a 0, 0.0000000 something cent. Okay? And after you call, you will go to sleep. And every time you call, it will load again, wake up, initialize, then only it execute, then only you go to sleep. So I can tell you the difference is that if you use Elastic Beanstalk, this is like uh, uh, the application server is running all the time. You can actually run something like cron or something like that in the background or something like that is possible, but not with Lambda. Lambda is just you want to call, you wake up, you do what you do, then you go to sleep, that's it. Is it clear the difference? Or if you don't understand, you can tell me, I, I can explain a little bit more. So I understand or don't understand? Okay. What's your name? Shavin. Shavin. You do you understand? Yes. Okay. So the main difference between Elastic Beanstalk and Lambda is that Elastic Beanstalk is like a server, you, you power it up. But although it's like a server, you power it up, but you don't mess with the operating system. You launch your code inside, you will run your code, but you don't mess with the operating system. And the difference between Elastic Beanstalk and Docker is that the Docker allows you to go down to the Linux operating system level. But this, it doesn't allow you to go to the Linux operating system level. And the difference between Elastic Beanstalk and Lambda is that Lambda, wake up, do something, go to sleep. But Elastic Beanstalk, wake up, do something, and then still stand by there. And until the next call, you do something, then stand by. When you finish the task, don't go to sleep, stand by. Understand? Huh? So, currently in our uh, accounting, uh, you know, our big ledger platform, we use both Elastic Beanstalk and Lambda. Okay? And there are also two types of Lambda. One type of Lambda is for the platform, the platform Lambda. The other type of Lambda is actually what we say the external Lambda. This external Lambda is actually for our customers. Because when we are developing this platform, it is very important for us to build everything that is uh, same. Then we put it inside the source code repository. Maybe Sengheng, Thunder Mesh, uh, uh, Link Taya, they want to customize this, customize this. So all these things that are customized, we put it inside this Lambda. What Suhaida, your team is doing in the integration, you are doing this part. You are not doing this part and you are not doing this part yet. Not yet maybe later okay so this lambda here we we do it for external it's a serverless so when the customer want to integration it call one time then uh, it execute then it is gone there's no server involved and this lambda actually allow you to run in two method the first method is when something call, you wake up the lambda, do something, and then go to sleep. That's the first method. The second method is like the cron method. That means that this lambda, it will, uh, you can set one uh, uh, every one minute, wake up, do something. Although nobody call you, but you just wake up by yourself and, uh, and then do something. It is possible. Okay? So, now, when we look at the elastic beat stock, uh, uh, behind the scene, there will be many database. Okay, so right now I'm going to draw a few database. One is the main RDS. I'm not sure if it is the main RDS, but let me log in to the console, and uh, we will see the. Uh, this is a console, this is a master, I need to sign out and then uh, sign into the console. I need 
the MFA code. So this is the MFA code. This code will keep changing one. Okay, so what I'm, I'm logging to this, <coughs> I click on the RDS and there are four instances here. Uh, here you see there's uh, four instances of the RDS. The first most important RDS is the Big Ledger Dash Master. So this is uh, wrong already. So I should call this uh, Big Ledger Master. Inside this big ledger master, there are two to three different databases uh, for the global global uh, uh, account, uh, the whole big ledger platform. And then here you see the AKN uh, staging 001 and Canon 001. So I have a staging 001, I have a Canon 001. This tenant 001 uh, currently is like when somebody go to the account.com platform website, they create a tenant, they call the API to create a tenant. Then it will create another database inside here, another database inside here. Each tenant will have one database. Okay, This is for now. Uh, but in the Java program, we have already coded it in such a way that if if more than 10 database create a new RDS instance is tenant 002 and then create a new database here then if more than 10 then create another new, new, new RDS okay we have coded it but we also parameterize it because we are still considering hey next time uh, maybe instead of one RDS with 10 database we may make it such that we change the 10 constant to 1 so that every time there's a new pe people creating a database, we create a new RDS. There's also advantage of doing this. The advantage of doing this is such that um, when we want to delete the database or when we want to migrate, we will not have problem with this database taking up too much resources affecting the other database flow. And we can also charge our customer based on the RDS size. Okay, there's a there's an advantage to it. So uh, this part has not been done yet, but the creation part is done. But uh, we have not set the ten to one yet. We have not. Okay, but we, we will get this team to actually look at the architecture, the system, everything. Then you start modifying some of the things. Okay. So now um, this master database. And the tenant database, actually they are using the same DB schema. That means that the database table columns are all are the same. Okay, so, so uh, uh, when you look at the database schema, you always need to ask yourself a question. Uh, same schema, but is it running in the master or is it running in the tenant? Because Although they are the same database table format, for example, the permission definition and things like that, when it is running in the master database, the permissions that are applicable in the master is different from the one in the tenant. For example, in the master, in the master database, you have a permission to create a group, you have a permission to create a tenant. But this create tenant application make no sense in the tenant database itself. Because in the tenant database itself, the permission would be things like can I create a company, can I issue an invoice by this branch or something like that. But in the master database, we will not have uh, permissions to issue invoice by branch. It, it makes no sense, it, it is not applicable. right? So although we are using the same database schema, but when, when we do it in the, when we use it in a different uh, whether it's a master, whether it's a tenant, uh, the way we use the database table is different. Okay, I give you one more example. When somebody 
go and sign up a Facebook account, just like yourself. You sign up a Facebook account or you sign up a Bitbucket account. Okay, you sign up your own personal or, or GitHub. Uh, you sign up with using your own personal email. After you sign up using your own personal email already, then let's say I also have a GitHub account. Then I create an organization or I create a team. Then after that, I invite you to the team. Alright? Now, let's just say supposedly now you're no longer working with us. So uh, I kick you out from the team, I delete you from the team. But when I delete you from the team, it doesn't delete your user ID. Your own user ID is still yours. And although I am the organizational, uh, uh, because I can have a wavelet, I can have a big ledger, maybe you uh, are invited to the big ledger and the wavelet team, but maybe you also join the other team. So although you are a member of my team, and maybe you are also an administrator of other teams that you create and you pay yourself, and when I kick you out from the team or when I invite you to the team, I do not have the right and the permission to reset your password. Understand? So, you may be having a Facebook ID, I have a Facebook ID, I create a Facebook group, so I'm the administrator of the Facebook group, you also create a group. In your group, I am a member, but when you are in my group, you are the member, I am the admin. Understand? Okay. So, essentially, if you look at the big ledger platform, what we are trying to do is actually to create a Facebook plus a Dropbox plus a, a LinkedIn combined and use it in the ERP environment. Okay? So, when you want to have Facebook, LinkedIn combined, and use it in the ERP environment. Um, uh, we want to be able to be in future, whereby I, 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 you just imagine now, uh, today we have so many people uh, uh, integration. You send the file to me, I send to the FTP, to the server, then you take from the FTP server, then you integrate here and there, right? Uh, this kind of approach is this the same as 20 years ago when I want to email you an attachment. I have to attach the file into my email, then I send to you. But sometimes my email provider block or more than 20 megabytes cannot send. Still can remember those times? Yes. Can I? Or maybe you are too young to experience that. Or you also experience that. Attachment cannot, right? 25 kilobyte. Uh, 25 kilobyte. Okay, you also experienced that. I thought I'm the only one old enough to experience that. <laughs> okay, so, and then do you also recall the time that you no longer send attachment, but you're actually uploading the file into a Dropbox, then you send a Dropbox hyperlink to your friend, and then he can download himself. Yeah. You remember, right? Yeah. Okay, so, when we are doing uh, this method, essentially what we are trying to do is to make you copy the concept of Dropbox, of uh, Facebook, of uh, all this, but use it in the enterprise environment. It, use it for business. So that means that uh, in the future, maybe somebody just need to uh, upload the invoice to, to this, and if they want to send somebody invoice, they just send them the link only. Then they can call, click on the link, then it authenticated, they can download the invoice themselves, regardless of whether it's in JSON format, in PDF format, or in whatever format. Okay, understand? Okay, so currently, is there, can you think of any accounting software, any software like that? Most of them SQL accounting windows. You know, even some of them are web based, but they are they are not using the yeah. Facebook concept. They are not using the Dropbox concept. Agree? So, if you look at Facebook, if you look at Dropbox, Dropbox only ma, save files only ma. If you look at Facebook, Facebook is not like a, a Google where wow the search technology is so chunky, so so advanced or something like that. 
right? But it is the idea. It is the idea. So what we what what we do here, yeah, maybe it's it's not like uh, something new, something too too complex or something like that. But it is the idea that we have that we want to transform businesses to actually make use of all the technologies that we are already available, experience and find that it is good in uh, some of the drop off social network or whatever. We learn from there and then we use it for business. Okay? So, um, now that I talk to you about the back end, uh, actually it's quite simple, right? Uh, API load balancer, some elastic, elastic bit stop and some lambda and uh, database is uh, RDS. But we have one or two things more. Uh, in EMP or in some of our servers, uh, we, we use only RDS, but in the big ledger environment, we actually use S3 also. Okay, we use S3 also. Uh, why we need to use S3? Because RDS, if we store the images inside, number one is slow the database, number two is that uh, it's also quite heavy on the database and it's expensive. So in the, in the big ledger, we actually will save files in the RDS, but we will create one row in the database table saying that this file is this location so that they can do the search and things like that. Okay. Um, and in this elastic pin stop, we are actually using a Spring and Java, of course. Okay. Uh, this one, I think I don't have to convince you. Uh, top programming languages in the world. Uh, this one is. Uh, Okay, so top programming languages in the world. Okay, so we, we so in this team at the later part you will have to decide which part you want to focus because uh, we cannot have everybody study the same part then only do one thing, nothing works. Uh, we need to connect to everything like right? correct or not. But if you are a manager, if you are a manager or assistant manager or if you aim to be a manager someday, you need to actually have a full stack. Okay? You need to know inside out every part. Okay? So you don't need to do the all the work, but you need to know all the things in order for you to actually be effective in delegating the work. Okay? So now I covered the back end. The next step is I want to cover the front end. Okay, the front end. So in order to call this uh, uh, application load balancer, uh, there are many different technologies that we can use. Of course, one of them is uh, we are using the Angular. Okay, Angular. Does anybody know what is uh, SPA? Anybody? Ifa? Okay. SPA stand for single page application. Okay? Single page application. There are some terminology that I will be introducing in this uh, in this introductory course so that when you look at uh, those uh, words uh, you will not be panic, uh, you will not panic, you, you will understand it. Single page application means that uh, traditionally in a website you click one hyperlink, you load another page, you click another hyperlink, you load another page, you click another hyperlink, you load another page. But single page application means that you go to a website, okay, then when you look at the website, uh, you click any hyperlink, uh, there's no refresh on. When you click, immediately it just comes out, it doesn't even load from the server, okay? So this is what we mean by single page application. What happened is that in a single page application, when you go to a page, this is a web browser. Traditionally, when you have a website, you click on the link, it loads from the server, it's a new page, refresh, right? Which is in EMP, also like that. But in single page application, when you load, Okay, when the browser loads the HTML into the web browser, 
uh, what is the format? It's a HTML format, right? In browser, they call it the document object model. DOM, they call it DOM, document object model. So, uh, the uh, without all these single page application, sometimes you can find JavaScript that will follow your mouse pointer, la, give you a trail, la, uh, 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 some JavaScript basic animation using jQuery library and things like that. What happened is that this jQuery and this library, uh, let's say sometimes you click on the drop down list, ooh, it will slowly animation, slowly come down or something like that, right? So these things are actually the JavaScript manipulating or playing with the document object model of the web browser. Okay, so now um, in single page application, in single page application, you will load an index.html into the page and then uh, they do a full library for you to write your application in such a way it compiles into a JavaScript that is loaded to the web browser in such a way that instead of using JavaScript just for the button or just for the drop down list, now you can use the JavaScript for the whole web page itself so that it, it functions like uh, as if you are writing a uh, like as if you are writing a Windows application then you compile the application then you run it on your computer it's almost like that okay so this is a single page application and then the next step that I want to share with you is that after they have the single page application uh, there is this uh, thing called the progressive web app progressive web app called PWA progressive web app so progressive web app is taking this single page application one step further uh, to support this JavaScript application, the SPA, to be online and offline capable. Okay, to be online and offline capable, uh, and to be able to, uh, if you look at the definition, uh, uh, actually, no need to look at the definition. Uh, if you look at the Udemy course that we have, okay, uh, you click on the My Courses. Then you can search my courses. Uh, it's a PWA Progressive Web App, the complete guide. So I don't know how long is this introduction, but uh, let's take a look. We're slow for you, and make sure that you really follow along. This uh, this is uh. So we're almost set to get started with the meet. Okay, this is not the introduction of. Uh, PWA, but let me just uh, play a video on PWA. Too long. Uh, this one is uh, two minutes. Okay, this is a uh, two minutes introduction on PWA, Progressive Web App. Okay. <laughs> You can see that your website and your mobile application are in the If you're already sold on progressive web apps and you don't need to make a business case for them, you can probably skip this video. But if you need to convince one of those business decision makers, stay tuned. The web is an amazing platform that has easy access for developers and users alike. It's low friction, 
provides easy distribution, offers immediate redeployment, and enables simple A-B testing. When Flipboard launched on the web for the first time this year, they reported that their monthly active users increased by 75%. On the web, users can get to a new site with a single tap. Apps can be a bit more limited. In many countries, app installation happens when you buy the phone. Three or four apps are sideloaded at the outset, and that's it. In other countries, you may have access to an app store, but over-the-air data is expensive, and Wi-Fi can be difficult to find. Okay, this one is Down. also good. Let me give you uh, another one. Uh, Benefits of a progressive web app. Um, I don't need to explain further. Uh, so, on the front end side, we are not just going to build pro progressive web app. It is possible that uh, from the Angular, uh, it can be compiled as a mobile apps. Can also be compiled as a desktop application. Okay, but progressive web app. They do have some limitations. If we are just launching it as an uh, application within a web browser, it has got limitations. What limitations? For example, a web browser will limit you how many local storage, how many megabyte, 50 megabyte, or how many megabyte. And if you run a progressive web app within a mobile phone web browser, and then even if you add it to the home desktop, your progressive web app cannot access your mobile phone address book. And if you're running a progressive web app within a web browser and you want to uh, integrate with some Bluetooth sensors or maybe some of the native uh, application, you can. You, you cannot do it. So uh, we may still need Android, but 90% uh, but of our application don't need to have access to the person's address book on the phone itself because they are alternative method of doing for example let's just say i don't know whether you visit some website before like linkedin they ask you can i access your address book or contact book so that i can uh, uh, pull uh, and invite your friend and uh, get connected with you and things like that so um, uh, although uh, it would be nice to actually be connected to all the phone features and functions but there are alternative ways of doing it so for now, in order to concentrate our effort, our time, our expertise, our energy, we will just focus on the Angular, okay? So, um, 
I think I give you a architecture from the system level, but the next step that I might want to do is I want to give you an architecture from the front end perspective. Okay, from the front end perspective, if you look at the account dot com, okay. Okay, in this account.com, of course you have to log in now, I already logged in. But basically what we want to do is, uh, I want you to imagine your mobile phone. Imagine your mobile phone whereby we, just now as I, I said, we are copying the concept of Facebook and Dropbox here, right? But here I'm going to tell you that we are copying the iOS and the Android. So here we copy Facebook, Dropbox, here we copy Android, iOS. So what do what are we copying now? First of all, if you look at uh, most of the ERP system, like including our old ERP software or any of the accounting software, you will find that uh, there are so many menu, and then the permission setting all this is so complicated, right? So complicated. So in the new uh, platform that we have, number one thing that we need to identify is that. We will try to make all the permissions that are related to this applet to be configured in this applet. Instead of I have a global permission, all the permissions that are related to this applet to be configured in this applet so that it is separated cleanly. Now, if you look at the Wavelet EMP, for example, maybe whether you can view the average cost. You configure it here for one screen, then after that you go to another screen and suddenly cannot. So, so uh, in order to make it break it down to be smaller, you need if a permission related to this applet we configure here. If it is a, although it's a similar thing, if it's related to that, then we configure it there. So that's a. So we try to make each of the uh, in your mobile phone you call it apps, uh, but here we call it applet. Now, if you Google about it, Applet is traditionally used by Java yeah. uh, to be used in the web browser, but that technology is dead and it's no longer in use, so we can reuse the word uh, Applet. Uh, okay? So, um, what happened is that Android is meant for personal user. You sign into the Android, your phone, you sign in with your fingerprint, then you just download the app that you want. Uh, in a device. Now, in this case, when we are using it for the business, it's a little bit more complicated. I, I, I explain to you why. First, when you sign up to this platform, there are two types of applet. The first type of applets are the applets that individual, as you sign in, just like individual into the GitHub, GitHub, Bitbucket, or Facebook, you can download those applets that are specific to you, individual. Some of them may be chargeable, some of them may be free. You know, just like you go to Android Play Store, you can download some free, some chargeable. But there is one big difference. One big difference is that, can you imagine if, let's say, uh, I am a Sengheng, or uh, I'm a Thunder Mesh boss, Thunder Mesh boss, so, um, I think the platform is good, so I want to use the platform. And then, uh, first of all, I need to have a database. So I will go to the tenant management here. I will go into this applet. Okay, so when I go into this tenant, I want to add a new tenant. So I want to create a tenant. Where can I create a tenant? I don't know where is a great tenant. Add tenant. Add tenant, okay, I have an add tenant. So I can choose a logo, then I create an add tenant. So after I add a tenant, it will create a database here, correct? It will create a database here. And then, uh, I'm the admin now because I created, I'm the owner of the tenant. So I can uh, invite other users to, to join me, just like Facebook group. I can join, 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 add as member, add as whatever. So after I created a tenant, I can create more than one tenant. I can create tenant one, tenant two, tenant three. Okay, Homa, uh, Zengheng, Thunder Mesh, uh, whatever. So I can create multiple tenants. After I created the tenant, the thing is that 
I have many employees. London Bridge, I have finance department, I have a different department, okay? And in this account, there may be hundred thousands of apps, different kind of apps doing different things, right? So there are different apps doing different things. But some of apps are paid, some are free, and some of this app, uh, let's say I want to a leaf application app. So this leaf application app, because I have many different tenants, I also own many different tenants. So uh, maybe in this tenant, I uh, is the main tenant. All my staff, uh, I want to use the leaf application here. But for this tenant, no need lah, because this tenant, the business is uh, maybe some business that I cannot do time attendance one. So I, I I don't want this. So what happened is that anybody, including you, including him, you can create a catalog. Let's say this catalog, one catalog is like a group of applet inside. So I can I can have a, a catalog management. That means that uh, is uh, right side catalog. So basically, I can create a HR catalog. I can create a finance catalog. I can create a different catalog. Then in each of the catalog, I add. Let's say if a finance catalog, I only add. Uh, uh, bank reconciliation, uh, profit and loss, uh, and uh, maybe something. Okay, I can name the catalog myself, or uh, whatever name you want to give, give it. Maybe you have finance manager catalog, finance junior executive catalog. For the manager one, he will have one applet that can see P and L. But for the executive one, they only have bank reconciliation or something like that. And after I created this catalog, let's just say if uh, I want to grant you the permission, when you go to your Play Store, you also log in your own ID, you go to the Play Store, uh, you can install the applet in the catalog that I give you permission. Okay, so I give you a permission to install the applet. But maybe I give you permission in my catalog, there are 10 applets. But maybe, although I give you 10 applets, you don't want all 10, maybe you only install 2. Because if you install, I need to pay. And for the applet that you don't use, you don't install. Lah. Okay, although I give you the permission, but that doesn't mean you must install. Understand? So, I, uh, the neighboring guy is here. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Should I tell him to say? Yeah, never mind, never mind. I think he's leaving. So, he's asking me, when should he come back? Oh, uh, you, you can ask him to come in. He should come in now or later on? Uh, he can come in now, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, I was talking about the catalog whereby I may create a catalog, put 10 applet inside, I grant IFA permission to you to access to this catalog, but he only installed three. But there's one of the applet that I think is important. As the administrator, I I'm willing to pay for it, so I, I can also click one button to install for her. Oh, this one, Android, you don't have this function. It's not like I can, I, I pay for the program, I install for you. <laughs> can I install for you? I cannot, right? Cannot. Cannot, right? So, you see, in company environment, enterprise applications, uh, it is quite important to have this kind of features and functions whereby I install for you, I, 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 I pay, I install for you that kind of features so that the next time if I log in, eh, there's an icon with something new okay, basically the interface you see here is still not so beautiful but what we do is uh, later we will make it more beautiful make it look exactly like the mobile phone with the icon where you can press then it starts shaking, then it, uh, you can group it into a so we will let the user do all those things uh, by themselves. Now, if we create uh, an application that is uh, very complex like the ERP, nobody knows how to use. But if we learn from the mobile phone, why we need to learn from the mobile phone uh, is because mobile phone is so user friendly, it's used by millions, billions of people, and nobody needs a teacher to teach them how to use the mobile phone most of the time. So, same thing, ERP is very complex. So what we do is that uh, we want to revolutionize the way we do things 
to copy the ideas from mobile phone whereby we create all kind of uh, modules, applets, features and functions and then we uh, uh, launch it to our users in such a way that uh, they can use and they can uh, uh, share it, they can, uh, you know, you can share an app or oh, can you do that with the EMP, how to share, cannot share, uh, not even the uh, 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 SQL accounting, auto count, those Windows accounting software also cannot, right? So you can share, and then this platform, usually you also need to think of one very important concept that we use here, is that usually an accounting software ERP vendor, when they develop the application, they only think that this application is used by internal employees. Uh, when you, you see our server, sometimes uh, server slow because they generate report and all those things, you have 40 users, 50 users, 100 users, 1,000, 2,000 users, the server also need to be quite big already, right? And once, when you power up the server, it has to be on all the time. It's not like you shut down, scale up and down like that, right? Monolith application, this is what we call. Now, when we are making use of an elastic beanstalk, which when the load here is heavy, you can do the setting and the configuration in the uh, application load balancer that automatic power up more. And then when there's no load, reduce it back. Okay? So what we are doing is like when we develop this business application uh, that are serverless in nature and also when we tell our customer this big ledger and account platform uh, is not only for your internal employees, your suppliers also can use it. Your customers also can use it. You can create the applet for the RMA, but cannot do, cannot edit, but view only for your customer to access. So we may have a hundred customers, but each of our customer. 500,000 customers, 1 million customers. Think about it. So, what we can do is that through this strategy and method, we can tell the customers that, okay, for the ERP, accounting, all this, we're charging you. Lah. But uh, if you want your customer to be able to view the warranty status, uh, uh, check or something like that, we give you some free app, then you ask your customers to join us and uh, sign up, then they can uh, view for free. This one, I don't charge you one. Can you imagine how many users we may be able to attract to the platform? So, from the, <coughs> what we want to do here, then maybe we, we, we can tell, tell our customers, the users here, uh, if you introduce uh, how many customers, then uh, we give you free credit uh, for how many months or something like that. And then, uh, uh, so when we doing this new platform, because as you can see, we are going uh, very advanced, uh, from automatic, uh, power, powering up the servers and all these things. So in the new product that we want to develop, we want almost, if possible, zero human intervention. But if we want zero human intervention, we must be damn good, very user friendly, and uh, with all the robotic chat, uh, automatic support, all these things must be good lah. If it is no good, then uh, when the user not happy, they throw away the software platform, the one to use anymore already. So if we want to uh, make a product that can scale fast. We have to make it really good, uh, and if you want to make it good, feature rich, powerful, those group of programmers that are doing the project alone is not enough. We need a bigger team to actually build the platform together. Okay, so building the platform is fun because uh, number one, it's not so stressful like doing the project because uh, for this one. Uh, you will get a lot of uh, guidance, a lot of hand-holding, explanation, uh, lectures and it will be recorded so that when uh, there's new team member who join, who miss the opportunity to attend today's talk, then they, you can, uh, Ariadi can arrange them to watch the video to get some basic and understanding first.
Okay. So, uh, in terms of the front end, what you see in the account platform here, as I explained about the group, the tenant, the, all these things, I want to introduce some terminology. Okay, some terminology. So, can I drop this? Okay. Okay, in this, uh, remember we need to have a tenant scope and we need to have a master scope. The master is a master database and the tenant is an individual tenant for each of the customer, the database. Okay, now let's just say uh, I have a user. Okay. Uh, and then here is the same as the user, but I think it's better that we call it tenant user. Okay, right? So in the master, we have this thing called the master group. Here we have a tenant, we call it team. Here we have a master uh, role. Here we have a tenant. Row. Then here we have a master permission definition. Here we have a tenant permission definition. Okay. Now during the development uh, process with the big ledger team, we have a problem because when they say, hey, you create a group, uh, everybody confused, hey, is it the group here or is it the group here? Or are you talking about this row here or that? Oh, a lot of bugs, you know. We create all the bugs because everybody confused, hey, are you talking about row here, row here, row tenant here or something like that? So uh, when we uh, do the discussion and all that, we must be so clear, we must be using the, the word here, okay? The master, 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 and then the tenant, 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 tenant. Uh, because the same set of database schema is used different place, and then some of the Java class it can be used here, it can be used there, so it, it, it can be rather confusing. Right? It's very important. So that is one of the things. Um, and then when I talk about the user interface, I was uh, explaining about uh, creating the tenant. Now we want to take it one step further. One step further is like uh, if you look at uh, this uh, same thing, account.net. Uh, if you look at the domain name here, anything that is .com uh, is used at the global level. Anything that is .com that is used at the global level. Anything that is uh, like sengheng.account.net, the .net one, we will make this .net, account.net domain name to be usable by the customer. That means that they can create sengheng.net, thundermesh.net, something.net, account.net, something. All the .net, .net, we let the customer use. But all the account.com one is at the global level. The .com one is at the global level. That one is controlled by us, okay? So, this is what we call the sub-domain name. Account.net is a domain name. Sengheng.account.net is the sub-domain name, okay? So, we can have many different sub-domain, okay? Now, if you look at the cell labs, cell labs, actually, there are two parts. One is they have access to this back end. The other one is, if you look at the, let's say, cell labs here. Okay. If you look at this website, it's also cell labs dash account.net. We also have another one that is uh, cell labs. .account.net. Uh, if you notice, this 
cell labs dot account dot net and uh, cell labs dash ecom dot account dot net. Uh, actually, if you look at the API here, API account dot net access to the database lambda and all those things. I don't care. Basically, this front end. We are just deploying different JavaScript or different HTML page. Maybe this e-commerce website, we have to design exactly like how they want. So this is, uh, uh, we, we put it in the S3, S3 bucket. And when we deploy all this HTML file into the S3 bucket, we can actually uh, uh, deploy it in S3 bucket, then we can uh, uh, put a cloud front cloud front here and when we make use of a cloud front then we can assign different domain name okay and then uh, currently currently this part is not yet automated but but one of the things that I want you guys to do is actually come into here to create another applet that they can click, then it can create this domain name, it can create the S3, it can create the everything, then it can save the security credential, then email it to the creator. Just like how we can create and then like that. No need, no need human intervention, the, the RDS power up, the database automatically created, everything saved. Understand? Ah, so it's not easy, but it can be done, right? It's not easy, but it can be done. Actually, in the process of doing this, once you're familiar already, for the technical support team, what I still want you to do is you create an applet. This applet is like you click this applet, uh, oh, it will automatically go to all the EMP server, do something, or check the availability at the user. Then maybe next time you create another applet here, uh, I want to power up a server. Then you select how many gig RAM, what I suspect, confirm, <laughs> created already. And then next time, even more advanced, we create this applet. Our new customers that want to use the EMP, we'll give you the URL, you do it yourself. Now, this is what I mean by when I'm challenging the tech support team and uh, uh, the cloud engineering thing last time we install server for three days we cut to one day from one day cut to two hours two hours cut to 30 minutes 30 minutes now now fastest is how long how fast you power up a server 15 15 minutes you run a script then you power up right mm. so now i'm challenging the technical support team from 15 minutes down to maybe quick 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 is two minutes and then uh then after that, further challenging you guys do zero minute. That means no intervention required. Then you, you you just allow the customer to use. They click themselves. It's done. Only ten zero minute. Okay. So next time, uh, if they want to upgrade server, you list down the step human do one or oh, I power down the server first then I back up this first then do this first do this that first all these things as you learn about the big ledger platform we're gonna assign different people to do different part to automate these things and then we set it as target we help you don't worry we help you step by step we guide you step by step okay so from here you see that our company we don't want you to do repetitive stuff, but we will invest in your learning so that you can do things that are automating. So you keep learning new things. This is how you progress. You don't do the same thing repeat. You, you, you keep learning how I can automate things, how I can make it zero. Zero repetitive tasks. If you work in Wavelet, I want you to do zero repetitive tasks. Things that can be done by computer, let the computer do. Okay? So, um, any questions? Today is an introduction, how many minutes really? 
One hour, 15 minutes already, uh, exit time already. You have any more questions? If no question, I'll adjourn. Or if you have question, one last question, then I will stop. Okay, is this the first step if you want to build the chatbot? Or is it totally different? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know whether you have watched the... Uh, you have watched the video. A video that I have a discussion with Diana. Mm. Okay, if you look at the chatbot, uh, the, based on the discussion with Diana, the other video, right? There are a few parts. You have the channel part, you have the dialogue flow part, you have the bot press platform part, then you have the robot part, then you have the account API part, correct? No? So, or not just the account API, but also maybe we want to automatically create the Jira issue and all that stuff. Then you need to be um, uh, connecting the RESTful API to the uh, Jira. Okay. So for the bot press, bot or dialogue flow, I think you guys have some experience, right? Or no experience also? Yeah. Also don't have. Okay, never mind. I tell you what. I will get the sales and marketing team to give you to share with you how to do it. But actually, they are not technical. They also can do it. Actually, if you want to just watch video and do, you also can one. But but uh, since they already tried it, then uh, we can get them to share the experience. Okay. So what we can do when we build the chatbot platform, there are actually a few parts that we can do in parallel. For example. Uh, the people who are less technical, less technical, but good product knowledge. So we will get them to help with the dialogue flow part, to create the questions, how it should be answers, and all those things. Then the people who are slightly more technical, we will actually also want to build their basics. That means that we will ask them to learn. Um, uh, have you? Have you visited this website called Get Postman before? Mm -hmm. This one? Okay. This is a Get Postman. Basically, it is a tool that will allow you to call the API, okay, uh, and things like that. So, because right now we have uh, a lot of uh, programmers and uh, in order for you to be able to create the full full chatbot platform is quite complex. There are many different parts. So, and some of these parts are really, uh, if you don't have the basic, uh, I, I give you the, the detail, uh, you will be fainted one. So what we'll do is that, uh, meaning at least for the next couple of months, I will give you introduction on each of the part. And for each of the part, I will point you to study some of the basics on the Udemy courses and things like that. So that on the week on a weekly basis, I will have a, only one or two sessions with you like this, one hour, one and a half hours. The other afternoons, then you can schedule uh, the team to come in and attend certain training together. Some of it can be done separately because maybe you want to focus on Java, then you want to focus on maybe some of you Angular, maybe some of you focus on what. So we will split the different sessions. But when I'm giving a talk, everybody can come in because I will give you the overall so that you know what is happening there. You, they know what is happening on the side. Okay. So uh, uh, have I answered your questions? That means that uh, to do the chatbot part, uh, you still need the basics and uh, uh, we, it's very difficult for us to straight away jump into the chatbot but I, I actually need to build some some basics with the team first. Because even if you do chatbot, if let's say the chatbot is only telling the customer, hello, how are you? I'm fine today. That kind of thing is a waste of time. But what you want is really the chatbot that can, my server is slow, then you go and check uh, what's the RAM usage of the server? Then you reply back, oh, because it's your RAM. Would you like to restart server? Yes, please. Okay, I'll restart the server. Then you will come in, right? Uh, so, in order to automate this, we need to actually build the basic one by one. Because I, I try to avoid a situation where uh, I ask you to do, but then I actually code for you everything, then you just see, oh, okay, then like that, it's no point, you don't learn one. So, so in order for you to learn, you actually I have to give you the basic, teach you the concept, 
Then after that, give you an assignment. Then you do the assignment in the process. You face problem. You try yourself wrong. Never mind until you get it right. That's where you learn. Okay. Okay. Any other question? If not, we are adjourned today's meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Stop this.